Hello everyone. Here is a short video on uh, Network in a Box or NIB. Before we proceed further, I would just like to mention uh, for those who may not know that all the slides are available on SlideShare account. So the reference is at the end, but if you also search uh, 3G4G space SlideShare on Google, you will find it as the first link. So while NIB generally stands for Network in a Box, Network in a Bag or Backpack are used as well. The term Network in a Box is generally used uh, with 4G or LT networks, but there is nothing stopping you in using this term for 2G or 3G networks. This is an industry defined term. There is something similar defined in 3GPP that we will look at later. Now this picture is from Vodafone Foundation whose mission statement is connecting for good and it's about combining Vodafone's charitable giving and technology to make a difference in the world. Uh, this is from an old uh, post which I did a blog post on the small cells blog. Now here they have used, a, 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 they define this as 11 kg emergency network in a backpack. Uh, dif uh, different uh, for different disaster scenarios to help out with connectivity. In a press release earlier, they had announced that uh, the instant network mini, which can be taken as hand luggage on commercial flights can provide up to five concurrent calls with a radius of about 330 feet and enable text messages to be sent to thousands of people. I assume these are the emergency broadcast messages. Now there is also a larger instant network roughly around 100 kilogram that can be transported in four suitcases. Uh, so it offers a much wider operating radius of up to uh, around three miles. <coughs> this is a picture of uh, Nokia's, uh, Nokia's network, uh, network in a bag from MWC. Now there is a link to their web page that contains uh, more details and videos. This is another picture uh, from uh, MWC from Parallel Wireless Booth. The one in the backpack uh, is their super compact solution, but there is also a compact solution that uses higher power radio. The one on the pole uh, on the left picture is the higher power radio. So I have to point out uh, at this point that there are many different companies with the NIB solution and each of them have their strengths and weakness. It's not always easy to compare them like for like. Another thing that should be pointed out here is that uh, there are other things like antennas, batteries, generators. Uh, they are not generally shown as a part of NIB, but they would be needed for deployment. So what exactly does NIB comprise of? So here is a simplified diagram. It includes the access network, which is the E node B in case of LT uh, and the core, which is uh, EPC in case of 4G. So the EPC typically consists of MME, uh, the serving gateway and the PDN gateway. And uh, HSS is generally uh, the home subscriber server can be shown as part of EPC or can be separate. If an IMS network is needed uh, for Volte calls, then that would be part of NIP2. But many NIPs don't contain the IMS uh, as this can actually create a bit of a bottleneck. So this is optional. IMS server is optional. The content server, which is also contains application server, uh, contains applications which may be needed uh, for uh, like whatever purpose. And these applications will also have to be installed on the handsets. Uh, Android devices are always used uh, as a part of this uh, because you can install applications designed for any particular scenarios. iPhones don't allow applications to be installed easily. So as it says, it can be used. So NIPS can be used in a variety of scenarios including public safety, uh, disaster relief, uh, enterprises, and private networks. 
So while you saw a simplified NIB architecture earlier, uh, this one is from Telefonica and it shows a more complex view. It's not possible to, it's not possible to connect to the outside world in all scenarios. Hence, the network in a box solution has to be designed as a standalone. Now let's change the topic a little bit and look at isolated EUTRAN operation for public safety or IOPS. So network in a box is more of an industry defined term. IOPS uh, is as per my understanding 3GPP defined term for NIB. It is detailed in uh, 23.401 Annex K. The specs state the following. Isolated EUTRAN operation for public safety IOPS, provides the ability to maintain a level of communication for public safety users via an IOPS capable E node B or set of connected IOPS capable E node Bs following the loss of backhaul communications. The isolated EUTRAN operation, mode of operation is also applicable to the formation of a nomadic EPS deployment that is a deployment of one or more standard IOPS capable E node Bs creating a serving radio access network without backhaul communications and also providing local IP connectivity and services to public safety users in the absence of normal EPS infrastructure availability. So if you, if you think about this, it's not really very different from what the network in a box concept uh, is defined as so but it, it's got a slightly different uh, take on things right so let's look uh, at the bit more detail so I became aware of IOPS from the public safety LTE blog now the link is actually provided here which uh, you can get from the slides there is a good amount of discussion on this topic uh, on this particular blog so I suggest if this is an area of interest, then you check out the blog, right? The link is provided here and at the end of the slide. So the figure depicts an example of shared RAN, which is public, which is serving both public safety users and commercial subscribers. There are separate PLMN identities for commercial customers, uh, which is the PLM, PLMNA and the public safety customers, which is the PLMN PPDR. And there are also separate core networks. So in normal condition, commercial and public safety subscribers are attached to their own centralized core networks. And all data connectivity and communication services are provided by the centralized core networks. So the lower part of the figure depicts a transmission failure uh, in backhaul. In that case, e bs can act activate IOPS mode and offer local services. However, IOPS services are available only to public safety UEs that have subscription for IOPS mode uh, that would also include the access class 11 uh, to 11 of 15. So the commercial UEs will get disconnected at this point. So the fallback scenario uh, procedure can also be seen from the figure on the right. Public safety UEs are normally attached to centralized EPC and there can also be UEs in active state when the backhaul connection is lost. So any RRC connected UEs are released and E node B establishes S1 connection to the local EPC. The IOPS mode is indicated by broadcasting an IOPS PLMN ID for which public safety UE has a separate USIM application. The IOPS PLMN is marked in system information broadcast as reserved for operator use which means that access classes 0 to 9 and 12 to 14 behave as if the cell status is bad, is barred. So remember, uh, even the access class 12 to 14 behaves as barred. It's only the access class 11 or 15, which can actually use the IOPS mode. Now, if you think about the standard network in the box, there is no such restriction, right? because that is more of a vendor specific implementation. Each vendor has some of the other uh, uh, customization or some of the other uh, feature which others don't have. So it is in a way quite different from a standard network in a box uh, solution. So 
So here are some links for other vendors network in a box solution. It also contains the links to the Telefonica presentation and the public safety blog, LT blog. So hopefully, uh, you know, you can read a lot more uh, on the, uh, from these links to understand uh, how different vendors are pitching their network in a box solution. So I hope you like this short presentation uh, explaining a network in a box and the isolated EU tron operation for public safety IOPS. Uh, as always, please feel free to provide your comments or suggestion uh, below. Or uh, if you would, uh, and if you like the video, please subscribe to our channel and also give it a thumbs up. Thank you.